Okay, in today's video, what we're going to do is talk about our get tax details. Before we do that, I want you to go to your type sales tax. Put in this line, validates tax rate, presence true, numericality true. You'll never run into a case where you need to plug in a tax rate by hand through a form, but you might do it in the back end through SQL. Or you might write a script that helps you grab it off some website and put it in your database. But anyways, we're just going to do this for completion's sake. Now flip back over to org products controller and the get tax details function really just takes the company and where in the region it's located and gets its sales tax. So our first order of business is to get the contact information. So we do org contact and remember when we do org contact we're looking for the company's contact information. So our org person ID is nil. Now we're going to find the region where this company lies and we're going to find its respective sales tax through that. So if you go to your type region, you can see that type region has many org contacts. And if you look into your org contacts, you can see that our org contact has belongs to org uh, type region. So because our company is actually we named it wrong. Um, our company is actually an org contact model. We could do something like this. We could do type sales taxes equals company dot type region. And from that, from there, we could go and do type sales taxes. And that's without the E because company belongs to type region. So we'll just go up one level, find type region, and type region has many type sales taxes. And then it'll just go back down to type sales taxes, which if I open that up, you can see that our type sales taxes actually belongs to type region. So by doing this, we find the sales taxes of the company through the region. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a variable type um, t tax details, and it's going to be a hash new. And we're gonna make another variable called total tax. Now we're going to loop over our type sales taxes by doing type sales taxes each do tax. And we have to end, remember, or else it'll complain. So the next thing I want you to do is you would want to do total tax equals total tax plus tax dot tax rate. And this really just totals up the taxes. So when you loop over the taxes, what you'll find is there'll be a tax rate. Because if I go to type sales taxes, you can see that there's a tax rate, a type region, and type tax. But we're really only interested in the tax rate. So that's what we're going after. And we'll find a total. And then we're going to, for each tax, we're going to put make a key value pair and put that hash, put that or put that key value pair in the hash. So we do tax details and it's going to be tax because we're looping our type sales taxes and we're going to do type tax dot name so tax is a type sales tax right now our type sales tax belongs to type tax so again we're going we're doing the same thing as we did here with the type sales taxes we're going up in order type tax and in type tax, we go to create type tax, we actually have a name. So we're grabbing that name and we're turning that into the key. And that is going to be equal to our tax, tax rate. So it may seem a little bit complex, but nothing too complex. So that's our type sales taxes. We're going to collect the tax and we're going to have uh, a separate separate tax for for with different, different tax rates. Let's say if you have a region tax rate and a federal tax rate, then you could, for example, this function will have a tax rate for the federal and a tax rate for the regional. So that's what it does. So next thing we're gonna do is do a tax details, total, and total tax. So that will get us the total tax that we found here. And we're gonna do another tax details. And when it's none, that means we don't have to collect tax. And we're going to return the tax details.
And that's it for this function. So why don't we go over there to our browser and see if it works. It doesn't work just yet. That's probably because we need to fix our image uploader. We, we're using not our avatar uploader, but our image uploader. So I'll leave that as an exercise. Why don't you create our image uploader and, and in the next video, you'll get the answers to how the image uploader code will actually look like. Don't overthink it. It's actually really easy to do. Actually, probably just requires some copy and pasting. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments or questions in the comment box below as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.